Pixel 4 versus the iPhone 11 Pro. Which camera is better and why? Spoiler, um, they're both the same. This video is over. What is up everyone? It is another beautiful day right here in Nashville, Tennessee. As you can tell, I'm in a bit of a different environment in terms of filming. This is subject to change over the next couple weeks because I'll be moving into my own place. So bear with me. It's the best setup that I could possibly come up with given my current circumstance, so... <sighs> yeah. So I get asked all the time, iPhone or Android, AKA the Pixel phones from Google. I am a Google Pixel ambassador as well as an iPhone user. So a lot of people ask me which one's better, which camera is better, why do you have both, so on and so forth. So today we're gonna be taking a look at the Pixel 4 versus the iPhone 11 Pro. I'm going to queue up five photos on the screen. I want you to guess which one is shot from the Pixel and which one is shot from the iPhone. Decide which one's better and we're going to break them down afterwards. So, here we go. So, what did you think? You have your guesses. Remember them, because that's preferred, because we're gonna go over them. So, first photo. Photo on the left was shot on the iPhone, and the photo on the right was shot on the Google Pixel 4. Photo number two. Photo on the left is shot with, drum roll please, the iPhone 11 Pro, and the next photo is shot with the Pixel 4. Photo number three, the first photo is shot with the Google Pixel 4, and then the iPhone 11. Fourth photo? Fourth photo, you may ask. Which one is which? Pretty similar. However, the first photo is shot with the Pixel 4, and the next one is shot with the iPhone 11 Pro. Fifth and final photo here, we're taking a look at this. The first photo is shot with the iPhone 11 Pro, and the next one is shot with the Pixel 4. All that being said, how did you do? Comment down below if you got them all right. Good job, you have a great eye. If you didn't, which ones did you get wrong and why? We are about to break down these photos. I'm gonna dive into here, show you what I've seen from them, and we are going to try and render a verdict at the end of this video to figure out which phone is best for you in terms of photography, camera, quality. Alrighty, hopping right into the computer now, taking a look at this first photo. Again, first photo on the left is shot with the iPhone, photo on the right is shot with the Pixel 4. Um, so taking a look at this, immediate, immediate differences. Now mind you, to try and fool you guys a little bit and trip you up, I did change the white balances for these photos to try to match them as evenly as I could, but I didn't really mess with anything else other than to try to create very similar temperature profiles for each one. But looking at these photos, diving back into it, immediate thing that catches my eye other than the temperature is the contrast in the Pixel 4 photo. Now, you are gonna see that that is a reoccurring theme between all of these pictures is the Pixel 4 photos tend to be a lot more punchy, almost HDR-esque, uh, as if you're bumping the clarity tab or something on uh, a Lightroom module. 
and they tend to be a lot cooler in temperature as well going through and you will see that. So taking a look at this first photo, good photos both way. You'll see there's a lot more of a blur in the background on the Pixel. Uh, versus the iPhone, it's a, a little bit less of a sharper fall off. And uh, thank you to my beautiful model, Courtney, Courtney Ekdahl. I will plug her Instagram down below, great photographer here in Nashville. And she very reluctantly agreed to take this picture for me. Another thing that really stands out in this photo, if we pixel peep a bit, you will see that the coffee cup on the iPhone photo remains white. However, in the pixel photo, there's this blue haze over it, some sort of distortion there, which, you know, is pretty easy to pick out. Of course, you can always brush it out, but, you know, for those of you who aren't super experienced photographers when it comes to editing, and you just want to kind of snap a picture and go, that could, uh, you know, that could pose some difficulties in the future. Uh, looking even further, if you want to zoom in in classic portrait mode fashion to take a look at someone's hair or the edge of an object, iPhones are notorious for cutting off certain edges or the fall off on the edges in, in portrait mode and actually both phones is just not cutting it at times. As you can see here, the iPhone does a little bit of a better job if we just follow her hair all the way around. It does a little bit of a better job of capturing those tiny hairs that are maybe blown in the wind and uh, it looks a lot more natural. Whereas the pixel you can see here, there's quite a bit of fall off with her hair. It is still a really sharp photo, but it uh, I would give the iPhone portrait mode on this particular photo the win. Going to the next photo. The iPhone is the photo on the left and the pixel is the photo on the right. Major difference here, a lot of people are taking photos inside, uh, a lot of um, bloggers and stuff like that where they do the lifestyle stuff, where they're taking pictures of their workspace. You know, this, this photo is for you right here. So we're taking a look at this, immediate difference is the color temperature. Again, the pixel is a lot cooler than the iPhone in this one. And it just appears to be a lot sharper. I don't know what it is, but it appears to be a lot sharper when you zoom in. And if you really zoom in and pixel peep on this photo, there's not a ton to see. It was shot wide open. It's not on portrait mode or anything. But when you look at this photo, if you zoom into the filaments on the light bulbs, you can actually make them out on the iPhone photo, but not the pixel photo. But and when you zoom in, they both look equally as sharp. However, when you zoom out, I think it has to do with that contrast that the Pixel 4 looks like a better photograph versus the iPhone. So on this particular one, uh, color temperature aside, as well as the filaments in the bulbs, I'm going to have to give the leg up on this one to the Pixel 4. So going on to the next photo, this has been something that has that was big on the Pixel 3 and the 3 XL, which was night sight mode. Whenever Google released it, it was a huge thing to be able to more or less take a long exposure with your phone, just straight native camera app, not having to get a third party app or anything like that. So taking a look at this one, iPhone has really stepped their game up. I remember there was a lot of back and forth, like the competitor um, pictures versus our pictures in terms of Google versus iPhone. Everyone knew it was an iPhone photo, so it was a nice little jab there, but iPhone definitely stepped it up on this one. And uh, as you can see, pixel on the left, iPhone on the right, there is a significant difference in brightness and color temperature on this. They're both relatively cool photos, but then when you start looking at the trees there, you'll see that the iPhone trees are a lot warmer and the pixel trees are a lot cooler as well as just the sky itself. But the huge thing here is taking a look at the sky. Let's just zoom in on this and check out all of these stars that we can see here. On the Pixel, I'm sorry, but it really falls short in terms of capturing that detail in the sky for astrophotography. But the iPhone nailed it. If I were to edit these photos, I think the iPhone is definitely gonna get the leg up on this one, just more detail. They're both really crisp. And another thing is on the iPhone, you can actually set your exposure time. So I believe the minimum is one second and the maximum is 10 seconds. Uh, to my knowledge, you can't do that on the Pixel 4, but you know maybe they'll come up with some sort of update in the near future and, and we'll be able to do that. But for right now, iPhone is definitely winning this round. For this photo, 
This one was one that was really close in terms of trying to decipher which one is which, but there's a couple things that I noticed in this photo that uh, really could go either way in terms of which phone it could be, but the, these things stood out to me. So iPhone on the left, no, Pixel on the left, iPhone on the right. Looking at this photo, it looks pretty similar. There is a little bit more punchiness in the Pixel photo. However, the thing that stood out to me the most, which I was surprised with, is the sky in this photo. Um, the iPhone had a lot more detail in the sky with those clouds completely unedited. And the Pixel, it kind of fell short on that. The sky looks a lot softer. It just, there's less range to work with, I feel like, in this Pixel photo versus the iPhone photo. Um, as you can see in the foreground on the iPhone, a lot greener, a little bit more of a green tone in the shadows throughout the entire photo, and a little bit more magenta in the Pixel 4 photo here. Now, if you Pixel peep, and you zoom all the way in, you'll see the Batman building, infamous Batman building here in Nashville, has a lot more detail on it. All those buildings in the background at a distance have a lot more detail on it when you zoom in, and it's a little bit softer on the iPhone. Again, it could be, we could chalk that up to the native uh, contrast boost in the Pixel 4 photos, but you know, I think I'm gonna have to give this one to the iPhone just based off of the sky alone. I'm gonna throw in a bit of a bonus here. Google has replaced the super wide selfie mode with a super res zoom mode. So I tested it out again against the iPhone 11, zoomed in all the way, I believe it's an 8X zoom on both phones. And I must say it's kind of incredible. Um, it looks like I'm zoomed in on the iPhone. With the Pixel, it doesn't really look like I'm zoomed in. And I didn't move from the spot that I was standing on that bridge when I took the previous photo. So this is the first photo. And then this is the second photo with super res zoom. How crazy is that? Seriously, ridiculous. So good job, Google. However, I would have much rather preferred the super wide selfie mode, personally. Um, but this is a cool feature as well. So speaking of selfies, last photo here. Uh, I don't know who this ugly guy is, but we're gonna take a look at this photo anyway because it's kind of all that I have. So as you can tell right off the bat here, we're looking at Pixel on the right, iPhone on the left. The face is a lot redder in the pixel and a little bit softer in terms of detail, but there is still that contrast boost happening within the entire photo. The buildings in the background of the pixel photo look a lot sharper, and then the iPhone on this one, they look a lot softer. However, I am still in the foreground, tack sharp and there's a little bit of blur, a little bit of you know separation via the aperture of the front facing lens that kind of creates that separation and to me creates a better photograph because of it. Uh, I do like how punchy the pixel makes this look on this particular photo. However, the redness of my face on the pixel is something that I'm not a huge fan of and the skin tones on the iPhone just look a lot more natural to me. So I wouldn't have to edit it as much. I would be able to just slap a preset on there or something in Lightroom and it wouldn't distort my face and make it look like I just ran a marathon. Speaking of marathons, shout out to my buddy Nick Bear back in Austin, Texas for completing his very first Ironman and he is now training for uh, to qualify for the Boston Marathon. So Nick, if you watch this, love you big guy, super proud of you and congratulations on the hour, 11 and a half hour time on your very first Ironman. Alrighty guys, overall taking a look at these photos, at the end of the day, they're both really good cameras on these phones. However, 
It really just kind of depends on style for you. Do you like more of a contrasty, more of a punchy HDR-esque image that maybe looks like someone tweaked the sharpness on? Pixels for you. If you want something a little softer, maybe a little bit more natural, go with the iPhone. However, however, you may think, you may think the iPhone has won this one. But, personally, I would pick the Pixel 4 camera over the iPhone 11 Pro. And the reason being is this, and I know everybody who knows me is like super shocked, except for my closest friends, but listening to this after seeing these photos, the reason why I would pick it is because it shoots raw native. What that means is I don't have to download the Moment app or any other third party app to shoot raw. The Pixel just shoots raw by itself in the camera that comes with it straight out of the box and I love that. Having a raw photo to edit versus a JPEG or a large JPEG photo to edit just means that there's more dynamic range to be edited within each photo and you just have more room to work with, period. So. For me, I would say that the Pixel 4 wins this round. In the next video that I'm going to shoot, I'm going to be taking a look at their video capabilities to see how they play out in low light, frame rates, coloring in post, and uh, whatever else I can figure out that you guys would like to see. So that being said. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure you hit the bell so you're notified when I post new ones. I'm gonna try and be a lot more consistent moving forward, so thank you guys for your patience. Hit that subscribe button. Leave me a comment below of things you wanna see in the future. Thumbs up if you love the video. Thumbs down if you didn't. Probably not gonna pay much attention to this. I am JT Wise Guy. It's another beautiful day right here in Nashville, Tennessee. And remember, stay creative, and I will see you in the next one.